Hi, welcome once again to your channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. I am your host, Dr. Moharam Ghosh and I am here today for you with another awe-inspiring story on your favorite channel. Before we go on to the story, for those of you who are my subscribers, heartfelt, thank you. For those of you who are visiting the channel for the first time, let me give you a brief history about the channel. We started in 2015 on Facebook and today on Facebook we have about 810 members. On WhatsApp, 120 members and on YouTube which we started in May 2020. Today we have about 205 subscribers. Thank you for your support. Generous, Gracious and Gallant was started with the objective of sharing daily inspiration and changing the thought process and strengthening the moral fiber of the coming and future generations so that we could bring about a change in society and ensure that the present and future generation lives by principles and integrity is valued. Could I request those of you who have not yet subscribed to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you get a notification every time I release another inspirational story for you on your channel Generous, Gracious and Gallant. Today the person we are going to be talking about is Madam C.J. Walker. Her birth name was Sarah Breedlove. She was an American entrepreneur, philanthropist, political and social activist, the first female self-made millionaire who believed in women empowerment and that became one of her principles mission and vision in life. She was born on December 23rd, 1867 in Louisiana. Her parents were Owen and Minerva Breedlove who were slaves. She was one of six children and all her elder siblings were born as slaves. She was the first child in her family born into freedom. She was t orphaned at a very tender age of seven years, she moved to Mississippi to live with her older sister and brother-in-law. She started working as a domestic servant and she had a total formal education of three months. Despite all these strikes of being an orphan, total formal education of only three months, started to work as a domestic servant moved outside her hometown to live with her brother-in-law and sister. She never gave up. Her courage, will and determination ensured she became the first female self-made millionaire in the United States, not the first female black self-made millionaire, the first self-made millionaire. Amazing. Let's more hear more about her. At the age of 14, she married Jesse Powell, who died shortly at 1887, but they had one daughter together, Alelia. In 1894, she married John Davis and left him in 1903. In 1906, she was married to Charles Joseph Walker who she also divorced in 1912 and who died in 1926. He was a newspaper advertisement salesman. As was common at that time, Sara suffered from severe dandruff and other scalp related problems such as baldness and other ailments and also skin disorders. And this was common not only 
for Sarah but also for a majority of black women at that time because of harsh chemicals used for washing clothes, washing their hair, also uh, the poor diet which these black women had. So Sarah learned the basics of hair care from her brothers who were barbers. 1904, just before her marriage, in 1906, she joined as a commission agent for Annie Malone, an Afro-American hair care entrepreneur millionaire and owner of the Piro company. Sarah used this knowledge of her hair care which she gained from her brothers also while working for Annie Malone to start her own product line. She took the name of Madam CJ Walker, Madam being the usage common among hairdressers in France and CJ Walker was the name of her third husband who was a advertising executive. Following her marriage to CJ Walker, she marketed herself as an independent hairdresser and retailer of cosmetic creams. Husband advised her as her partner and supported her with branding and ad advertising and promotion. Sara sold her products door to door, teaching other black women how to groom and style their hair. Putting her daughter Alilia in charge of the mail order business for her cosmetic line, she and her husband traveled to southern and eastern states marketing their products. By 1908, together they relocated to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and opened a beauty parlor there and also Alelia College for hair culturists. She became a hardcore advocate of women's, black women's economic independence and started a training program in the Walker system which had a national network of licensed sales agents who took healthy commissions on the sales. 1910 at Indianapolis they opened a factory for manufacturing their cosmetic range, a laboratory for research in further improvement of the products and new products, a hair salon and a beauty school for training of the agents who were engaged in the sales of her products. By 1913, they opened an office and beauty salon in New York, Harlem, which had become the ground for the Afro-American People. Between 1911 and 1919, at the height of her career, she co-employed several thousand women as sales agents and trained over 20,000 of these high-selling agents. These agents were all dressed in white shirts, black skirts and black satchels and visited houses in the USA and Caribbean. And she undertook heavy advertising, promotion and branding in Afro-American magazines and newspapers. She also shared with other and trained other black women to budget, build business and in encourage them to be financially independent agents in the states. She organized her agents into states and local clubs and the establishment of C.J. Walker Beauty Culturist Union of America was initiated by her. She held the first conference for this Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Cult Culturist Union of America in Philadelphia in 1917 and over 200 sales agents attended. She also was instrumental in the first national gathering of, of women entrepreneurs in America.
she sold most of her products through her agents and gave them very very healthy commissions to ensure they became economically independent she also ensured that her product lines were not limited to the uso she also expanded her product lines to cuba jamaica haiti panama and costa rica she championed for black black women and to become financially independent and delivered multiple lectures on political social and economic issues for black women she made significant contributions to multiple charities when she died in on 25th may 1990 at the age of 51 she left 1 lakh dollars to orphanages and also ensured that in her left will she left that two third of her future profits will go to charities especially towards women empowerment she was buried at woodland cemetery in new york city she was the wealthiest after american woman of her time she herself is has said multiple times when interviewed that she wanted money not for itself or for herself but for the good that she could do to society with the money and how she could go about empowering other women with the money she earned a totally awe inspiring woman who despite multiple strikes against her orphaned at a young age of 7 no formal education other than 3 months of Uh, learning at church no financial support twice divorced third husband died all these were strikes against her but she never gave up her determination her courage and stood up and became the first self-made millionaire in the USA not the first black self-made millionaire the first woman self-made millionaire amazing isn't she and she stood by her values of women empowerment women economic development literacy for women and put her money where where she believed in women empowerment in black empowerment literacy for women financial independence for women political suffrage for women ensuring that the women and blacks had money available to them for them to take the next steps in these areas when the country was at war she supported returning black officers lot of activities political social economic she undertook for the betterment of society and when she le- went to meet her maker she left two third of few all future profits to charities and not to her children and totally all inspiring women friends while all of us cannot be cj walker and contribute millions to charities we can all make a difference to one i am a strong proponent of the concept of difference to one mankind is facing its biggest battle against the covid-19 virus and lakhs have lost their jobs lakhs have lost their lives and there is a mass immigration of labor across the world here if mankind has to win this battle against the infamous covid-19 virus it requires that all of us who are better off need to stand up be counted and make a difference in society you can make a difference to one person in your community you'll be surprised at where the ripples of your kind up end up kindness end up please in these covid-19 times stand up be counted make a difference to one person in your community that itself will be enough for us to win the battle against the covid-19 virus 
till we meet again with another awe inspiring story stay safe maintain social distancing wear a mask whenever you are going out and follow all the norms issued by the government this is important for you to remain safe so that you can make a difference to others you need to be safe first and a request once again for those of you who like these awe inspiring stories please press the subscribe button for the channel and press the bell icon so that you get a notification every time i release a new video for all of you till we meet again with another awe inspiring story good luck all the best stay safe